and welcome to the 49th episode of the Have Aloha Will Travel Podcast. I am your co-host, as always, today, Kevin Allen, with me, as always. Catherine Toss Fox, we're with Hawaii Magazine, and um, 49. We're getting there. That means this podcast is older than me. This podcast is two times older than me. (laughs) Okay, well, you don't have to rub it in. Anyway, um... Well, so we have a special, speaking of which, we have yep, a special guest a very today. special guest. Yeah, some of you may recognize him from his Instagram because he's kind of Insta-famous. Uh, but beyond that, he's uh, the mayor of Kauai. This is Derek Kawakami, the mayor. Hello, mayor. Nice to see you on. Hi, Derek. Hey, everybody. It's great to be on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so let me give people a little rundown of uh, who you are. So uh, just so you know, um, a lot of our listeners are living on the mainland. A lot of them are people who have lived here before and and moved away, and they just sort of have a connection to Hawaii, or they love Hawaii for various reasons, as we all do. Um, We do have a lot of Canadians. We do. One of our our second most favorite um, most viewers come from a a town in Canada, which is really cool. Maybe we should go there, Kat, we'll get recognized. (laughs) <laughs> we'll be local celebrities. We should. And you were like, Just hey, like sorry. Derek Kawakami is. Anyway, um, wait, can I do the intro? Jesus, sorry, Kevin. Sorry. Okay, anyway. So, Mayor Kawakami is a third generation Kauai resident, proud graduate of Kauai High School. He has been in public office since 2008. Is that right? Yep. 2008. Is that right? Oh. Wow, that's Kevin. How old were you, Kevin? 2008. I graduated high school in 2013, so you can think about it like that if you want. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um, Anyway, uh, he's also part of a legacy of public servants. Um, You're in what, the third Kawakami to hold public office? Yeah. Right? Oh, wow. Wow. I know. It's hereditary. Anyway, he's he's also the father of two. He likes to stand up paddleboard and hike and jujitsu. Um, which I pulled from your bio, actually. And uh, we were just talking about this earlier, but um, you and your wife were running uh, are running on Instagram that really got popular during um, the state shutdown back in March. I mean, you were dancing and cooking and... Were you TikToking? It was getting wild. Were you TikTok dancing, Derek? <laughs> I, I don't even know if TikTok is an app. I thought it was just like a, another word for a short video and then... My daughter told me that's not a TikTok. I'm just about there too. Oh, uh, what anyway, was, what was it like um, being so we're Instagram? Happy to have you on. Instagram famous, Derek. You're talking to us a little bit about this before, and you said not so great sometimes. No, you know, it, look. Um, first, I want to thank everybody for for tuning in. Um, Catherine, Kevin, thank you for having me and for giving um, give me your time. You know, like my, I'm, my mom and dad would tell me, time is the most precious gift you can get. Because somebody's giving you a part of their life, so thank you very much. You know, uh-huh. we um, we 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 did we did those little stay home Kauai activities um, because my wife is a school teacher. She's been a school teacher for about 17 years. And as the island started to go into a stay home order and school was being conducted from home, she was concerned about the, the vast number of challenges that was going to present itself for our children. She knew that, you know, when you're a school teacher, you get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly of society. And, um, mm-hmm. and she was concerned about the stress levels. And she said, you know, we should try to do something to try to distract people you know if, if parents are fighting maybe they can put the computer on in the room and tell you know tell the kid hey go watch uncle Derek and his you know his silly stay home fly video while they talk it out but we, we did it um at first for just to occupy people's time because we had imposed a curfew as well which poses another set of unintended consequences so we we did a few my managing director actually scolded me one day, and it was the episode where I showed people how to make homemade maps. I don't know. Ah, if you know. Yes, I saw so that one. So the next day he came and said, "You know what? Stick to board games and baking." And I said, "What? 
<laughs> he goes, yeah, this whole mask thing that you did last night, our phones are ringing off the hook because it was really early on, right? Before masks became a, a good measure for people to prevent spreading the virus, we said, hey, you know what? People think they need N95s. They think they need, you know, store-bought masks. They're like, nah, let's just do a tutorial and teach them how to make their own. And, and then he said, so I got scolded. So that was the first time I got scolded. <laughs> the first time. And people really appreciate it. You know, they, they really appreciated it. But I think, like everything else, um, it, you know, it, there, there becomes a time where I think people just get tired <laughs> of seeing you. And I didn't want that to happen. So as soon as we lifted the curfew, we kind of stepped away. Um, and... To be quite honest, as much as we enjoy social media, I think what people need to realize is that by now, I'm not your typical mayor. You know, I surf, I play softball, I hunt. Um, I have a real life, and I have real activities I enjoy doing. And people thought that was pretty interesting and quirky, and they were curious. So our social media feed has always just been intended to be a window into our personal lives, right? So that means my teenage daughter has access to it and is on it. My, my, my wife is mostly the one that runs it, and I am on it. And I tell you, like any father will, if you leave an open window, and that's what our social media is for, we try to stay away from politics. Of, the, of course, sometimes it gets in there. But when you leave an open window, if that open window starts exposing your family towards the negativity that sometimes can foster in cyberspace and in social media. If um, if that happens, as a dad would do, I don't close the window. So we just took like a little break from social media. There just seemed to be so much um, negativity, at least in our algorithm of what was popping up on our mm. page. Mm -hmm. But I know that's not the reality, you know? Like when, and I tell my wife and daughter, like, look, Put the phones down, put the computers down. Let's get out, let's go to the beach, let's go do our shopping at Costco, let's go to Home Depot. It is a different world out there where people are caring, mm -hmm. they're appreciative, they're loving, and it's real. And so we've been focusing more of our time on each other and just really uh, appreciating life. I think that's what this pandemic has made our family understand is we appreciate time. Like, I thank mm -hmm. everybody for their time. Time is so precious, and I just don't want it wasted. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned you got that negative backlash, because I feel like, from what I've heard, was, like, a lot of positive uh, comments about your Instagram, because, like you said, it was a window into your life. Like, for example, I mean, this is an example with another mayor, but when, I don't know what fishing show it was, it was, like, a local-produced fishing show, but like uh, Mayor Kirk Caldwell was on it with his brother. And so a lot of people don't know he's, you know, he's a local boy right. and he was like fishing, like, like fishing. <laughs> and I remember I thought, wow, that's so much street cred for him. You know, like he got a lot of positive feedback from that. But like, what were people being so down on you about? Like your dancing skills or like? <laughs> nah, you know, there's just gonna be haters, right? I mean, oh, there's yeah. gonna be haters. I'm with the territory. I mean, there's just gonna be some people that no, no matter what I do, is just they're not gonna like me, and and it's fine, you know. Like like you're gonna realize, like and I'll, I'll come up over and over again. You know, I lost both of my parents um, in the span of like 15 months. In the span of two years, I lost my mom, my dad, and my older brother. And oh I tell you God. what, um, you know, my mom was a school teacher, and she would always tell me, you know, son, because I used to be like a rebel, right? So she would tell me, you know, son, you don't understand now, but you will. One day you will. And, you know, she would just tell me, you know what? You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Be comfortable in your own skin. You're fine the way you are. You can improve. But you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And so be fine with that. And that's just <laughs> the way it is. And, you know, no, I, I'll tell you, like, 99% of the feedback was positive. But, you know, there was, I'll be honest, there, there was a, a heavy feeling in my heart because as as much as I wanted to make people happy, I still understood that there there's people struggling out there and and, um, and it's hard to 
to put on a happy show mm. um, when your heart is is hurting and 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 you know I I don't think we had anticipated this pandemic going on so long and um, so we took a break and then but I want to come back I think we're gonna consider trying to do things here and there just to slowly get back into social media. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I got to tell you, like, the break is nice. Like, <laughs> just getting away from it. Yeah, like, absolutely. Once you get over the initial, like, oh, my God, like, what's going on in, in the world? Once you take a step away, it's refreshing. So Speaking of breaks, there was a, there's a big break in tourism right now. And uh, Kauai has been a, a rebel as Kauai always is, as right? They always Historically, is. Kauai's always been a rebel. Um, you know, you guys have, you know, not participated in the current um, pre-testing travels program in the way that it is right now. So if people want to travel to Kauai, they still need to, regardless of a negative COVID test, right? Quarantine. Is it is it 10 days now? I think the CDC dropped it to 10 days. Yeah, 10. Or 10 days, okay. And, um, but you guys did talk about or propose um, the resort bubble or if people stay in these enhanced, uh, movement quarantine sort of properties when does that take effect because that's a big game changer for people um oh, it's, it's going oh it already launched yeah it already launched so and you know what wow. also what we did is um what we did is we we identified that one of the big challenges with people coming to hawaii was the pre-travel test right because i mean the mainland is like on fire with covid19 and i and right our thoughts and prayers are with everybody that's going through it on the mainland right now because it's 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 real. Um, so one of the challenges was people being able to get a test and getting the mm-hmm. test results because you had to go through a trusted testing partner. So we worked with our district health office to say, hey, does it really need to be so narrow with tests? She said, no. I mean, any FDA a uh, test that is authorized for emergency use, whether it's a rapid antigen, uh, a PCR, if you get it at a hospital, it's good. So what we did is um, they said, if you're going to open up, you can open up in the resort bubbles to do the three-day quarantine and the second test. So we said, fine, we'll take what we can get. But we also said, go get a test. We don't care who it comes from. All we care about is that it's FDA authorized for emergency use. And um, we really wanted to open it up to the free market because that drives the cost down and competition is good. You, you know what I mean? Especially if these partners can get tested in time. So that, that's already happening. We fully opted back into the state's inter-island safe travel. So we're just like everybody else right now. But the catch is... We didn't want people to game the system and just fly to Oahu, catch a flight, and then fly to Kauai and say, oh, you know, I'm good. As long as you're in the state for 72 hours, then you participate in the state safe travel um, program, and you can go island hop to inner island. So when people ask me, well, what does that mean? I said, look, if I was traveling to Kauai, and if I'm like a lot of the other travelers, I'm not just going to come to Kauai. I'm going to go visit Maui, you know, maybe Oahu maybe the big island and Kauai, instead of making us your first stop, make us your second or third stop. Then, you know, you spend three days on Oahu or Maui, then safe travels, come to Kauai, and it's zero quarantine. Uh, So it can be done. I think there's some confusion about the inner island travel, because even for us, you know, we're we're both on Oahu, and we we haven't been actually... um, uh what's the word kevin like clear to travel i guess from our company <laughs> yeah and that's essentially it um but to travel inter island you don't need a covid test or how does that work if you're here uh, already so if you're traveling inter island so that means to maui oahu Kauai, um then travel looks very much like coming from the mainland to Hawaii. um you have to take a pre travel test um, within 72 hours of your departure and then have the result in hand um, to avoid to avoid it. 
So that's basically it. Now, I don't think... Can I make a mistake on this show? Absolutely. Well, yeah. We don't edit I'm anything, though, like so you might to... have to... Oh. Uh, you don't travel to, to Oahu, you don't need to, you don't right? Need, you don't need nothing on Oahu. You get, right. Everybody can just fly up. Yeah. You know, That's Oahu, right. yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> but... It's good for Oahu, I guess. I mean, depends, right? I think that's uh, kind of yeah. the, the interesting thing, um, you know, with Kauai and Oahu, how big the difference is between, like, um, you know, visitor intake. We are taking a lot of visitors. Um, what is Kauai like right now with um, such a low visitor count? I mean, we were kind of there for a little bit when things shut down initially, and it was really weird to go down to Waikiki and see, mm -hmm. like, an empty Kalakaua Avenue. Is it? Is it? Has it been like that? Uh, you know, um, the, well, we're starting to see some increases, right? Because we opened up a little with mm -hmm. the resort bubble, three day quarantine, opening back up to inner island travel. So we're, we're seeing an uptick, but it, it's nowhere near where we need to be, um, to start a, a really robust recovery effort, right? I think the last numbers I got, I think our occupancy was like 18%. Wow. wow. And I think it depends on the property, you know, you need like 30% to have it make financial sense to stay open. But here's the interesting thing about Koi. As far as our inventory of accommodations, um, we're much different than Oahu. We, we tend to have a, a longer average length of stay. Um, and that's because uh, we have a lot of timeshares. And so generally, mm. you buy a timeshare by week, right? And they're going to come. They bought the week, they're going to come. So generally, like a one-week or two-week buy, we have a lot of vacation rentals. And I'm talking about the legal ones that are bona fide and authorized to operate. So our inventory mix on Koi, and I think this is before St. Regis shut down for renovations, was about 30% hotel, 30% timeshare, 20% vacation rentals. So over half of our wow. employees um, are typically a visitor that stays longer. Um, so that's the interesting thing. And that's why I think when we were pushing the three-day quarantine and perhaps some of the industry in Waikiki was saying, that's not going to work, it's not going to work. It might not work because Waikiki is generally very... Um, like hotel resort, so the length of stay might be shorter. But that's why we always said we're a little unique on Koi, and um, we're just crafting our response based on what our landscape looks like. Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, like yesterday, we had, what, a, a little over 100 new uh, COVID-19 cases across the state, two on Kauai, but Overall, the numbers on Kauai have been very low, and they need to be low because it's not like you guys have as many beds as we do on Oahu, for example. I mean, you know, you have to take care of your population. Uh, what's the general feeling like on Kauai with residents? I mean, are, you know, are, are people are slowly kind of getting back to work. Great schools are slowly kind of reopening. Um, what's the general well, vibe? You know, it's a trip because remember, we went like a long stretch with zero confirmed cases. And you yeah. know, we're a small island, like 72,000. But, oh. you know, we went like, we went for a long stretch with like zero cases. Uh, we had one little cluster pop up, but we were able to detect and contain that cluster really quick. Um, and now we're seeing an uptick. I, you know, the general consensus is, is a mixed review. I think. A lot of people on Koi appreciate at least the experience of experiencing Koi very much like how I did when I was growing up. It was mellow, you know. The, the, you could find parking at the beach parks. You could go surfing and <laughs> still catch waves. Um, you didn't have these long strings of traffic. But I think the reality is that the economy um, is taking a hit. Uh, many of the businesses that, you know, um, have adapted, are doing okay. A large number of people actually are very thankful that the island has prioritized um, health and wellness um, while understanding that there needs to be a state recovery of the economy. Um, so that's what the general vibe is. And I think it's because when you look at it, because we went hard 
at the beginning, like curfew, boom. We, we even like the essential businesses, we locked it up tight. You know, all the other islands said we can do residential construction. We can we said no. It's gotta be, you know, it, it has to be cared for as affordable housing. We we're really narrow on our restrictions. And um, but because of that, we opened our economy sooner, right? So the ladies mm -hmm. can get their nails did, they can get their hair done. Um, that was a big thing for a little bit. Our, our salons opened up earlier. Bars, restaurants, organized sports. It opened up real early. And we've been able to keep it open, you know? So mm -hmm. that has also increased the level of consumer confidence, right? Like, we can open it, but if people don't feel safe, hey, they're not going to go to a restaurant, sit down, and go and eat. But I think because we've been able to keep an even keel, We've been able to build that consumer confidence so that people are out and about and shopping while understanding that we have to, as an island, keep the numbers low. Now, we're seeing an uptick. Yes, we are. But we are in a different place today than we were three, four months ago as far as um, the Aloha Safe app, which I would strongly encourage all visitors to take a look into and to participate in. It allows digital contact tracing uh, uh, to help the Department of Health. So if me and you are like hanging out for more than 15 minutes, uh, closer than six feet, if we become ill, Department of Health will, you know, send out a text and let me know, Derek, you're testing back positive. Would you like to inform, you know, potential post contacts? If I choose it, yes. Anybody that's been around me will just get an anonymous text saying that, hey, you may have potentially been exposed. So we have all these tools um, uh, to utilize. And so it's always about the acceptable level of risk. So though we're seeing an uptick, uh, we're keeping an eye on it, but we still feel that we are in that realm of acceptable level of risk so that we don't have to create more restrictions. Now things can change overnight, but I don't think they will. You know, most people employee have been doing what needs to be done. Yeah, the vaccine is coming, so I mean, gonna it's here. One? Are you going to get one? We, when it's I'm going to be like the last person to get one because I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm under 75 years old. I have no yeah. underlying health issues. I have no asthma. Yeah. I'm not essential. I'm It'll be like essential. you, and then me right below you. In yeah, the, exactly. in terms We're of going to be the last. <laughs> Um, yeah, but when it's your turn, important. are you thinking about getting it? Or are you still kind of waiting it out? No, I'm going to get it. Are you kidding? Yeah. I know. I, I, first like, first me, chance I can get. So it's a personal decision, right? Like, it's really, you know, it, it's, 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 if you want to get one, you can get the one. Like, it's kind of funny because I was sort of like in the boat, like, hey, you know what? There's all these people that need to get it. You know, I, I've been this far without getting sick. I'm super disciplined. Like, I go surf. I go work. I go home, I stay in my bubble, you know, and, and I'm good with it. Uh, I said, I think I can get through this whole thing without getting sick. Um, and then my wife, who has horrible asthma, mm -hmm. who, um, who's a school teacher, said, hey, you should be grateful you can get one. You know, there's people that, out there that want to get one, that, you know, they got to they gotta wait. So it, it puts things into perspective, right? Like, it, it's like, yeah. where I was, um, and I'm complaining about getting one, and then she's like, <laughs> "No, nah, I want to get one. I want to go to Disneyland." Like, yeah. You know? oh, and okay. I know that even after we get the vaccine, we're just gonna still be living the mask life and distancing. But it brings us that much closer to getting getting through this, right? And it helps protect the community. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go get one, and then I'm still dreaming about. Getting out to Disneyland, checking out that Star Wars lab. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to do. I, <laughs> I didn't get to go. Yeah, my friend put it in perspective for me. Um, he he is kind of pretty high up on the list to get a vaccine, but he he said he just kind of wanted to just so he could like, you know, interact with his parents again and not you know worry about that. And that's kind of a big thing for me. Uh, both my parents are kind of older, and you know, it's it just sucks going home and thinking like, man. I don't want to give you like I don't want to potentially have COVID and then give you COVID. So that's kind of pretty pretty high up on the list. Why I think I would. Yeah, uh, your parents are old. They're like 
My dad's 64. Like the mayor's age. Four? 65? Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, Dude, the mayor's photo made him look 20, 22 max. 23 maybe. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, we have to probably wrap up pretty soon, but... Um, oh, we got some time. So now... Oh, okay, good. Never mind. So, you know, actually, Kevin and I haven't even talked about surfing. Oh, so rare are you going to steal podcast. my so question? Let's talk about it later. I have a rather a real question. So, as as the state is opening up, right, and the Kauai in particular with this resort bubble concept, if when you, um, I mean, people have probably visited you from the mainland or abroad and come to Kauai, and where do you take people? Like, where are the places that you... Um, and don't give away secret spots. Like, you know that we don't do that. But uh, where where do you recommend people visit, especially if it's like their first time to Kauai? Oh, as far as like ocean activities, surfing and stuff? No, no, uh, no. just in general. Maybe anything, anything, anything. Oh, you know what? I, I would say, I mean, like it's hard because I have my favorite, I have my favorite eaters, right? But then I learned early on, like you name one and you leave one out. Like, <laughs> oh boy, you know. I would say, you know what, do what I do when I travel. I go talk to the people. Um, I, I'm cool, right? Like, I go in with respect to wherever I travel. And I ask them, like, what, hey, where, where, where would you like to eat? You know, I mean, they will tell. But um, when you talk to people or just watch, right? Like, go, go when you're driving by and you see a lot of local people at a place, go there and see what they're ordering and just ask them. You know, people in Hawaii. We may look like we are just sort of stoic into ourselves, but you'd be surprised when people come up to us and say, hey, hi, you know, I'm from Minnesota. I, I don't know what to order. What is this? You are going to see the most beautiful embracing hearts that you, you could ever ask for. Um, and and don't be intimidated because we actually, we, we get tickled pink when people reach out to us and say, I need help. You know, we're not that... You know, we're not that serious, even though a lot of people on Kauai can look serious. They just got to get to work and they got to provide and they might be, you know. But I love, um, my wife loves hiking. Um, Kokehe is our mm. favorite place to be. I mean, there is no cell phone coverage. You talk about just being able to disconnect. Um, the North Shore is the crown jewel of Kauai. And they redid how you get to see Hanale and Hyena. I mean, before it was like the Wild West. Everybody just drives down parks everywhere. It was a mess. But now it's much more organized. So, you know, people should do their research. Um, but Kauai is just a fantastic place to get a taste of authentic Hawaii um, and, and just get to experience um, a slower pace of life. You know, um, I could go on and on, but uh, I got somebody holding a board in my face saying that I got a few more minutes left, but hey, I'm having fun, so yeah. did you guys want to talk about surfing? I have one question real quick. Um, we ha we also only have seven minutes He's left. I'm going to tell you. Where's, no, I'm kidding. Where's your favorite surf spot? He's, I'm just kidding. You don't have to tell me uh, that. You know what, though? I'll tell you what, you know. Do we have time? Yeah, we got time. We got yeah. we got we got six minutes. So, our passion, like our family, is traveling. Like we will save everything to travel. And of course, we couldn't travel this year, so we actually have to save like you know some money. But my daughter, my wife, we're eating dinner. Like we eat dinner like a family, right? To this, we're at the table. You know, we're having conversation. Where would we like to travel? So you know, of course, my daughter is. I want to go to Disneyland in Paris, right? Oh, wow. Like, uh, my wife is sort of like, you know, New Zealand, you know, Iceland. She cannot make up her mind. Right? She's just everywhere she wants to go. And then, she, you know, I'm having a hard time deciding. So she she goes, well, would you want to go on a surf trip? And I said, no. <laughs> she goes, why not? Why not? I said, the last thing I want to do when I travel is surf. I said, you don't know, call you. I mean, we're so lucky. Like, we have spots that are off the beaten path that are just as good as and Like, people spend big bucks to go surf waves like this. Um, and you'd never be able to find it unless you knew somebody that knew about it or understood the conditions that need to come together. Um, 
we have great surf spots that are for everybody. Uh, we recommend beaches with our lifeguards that are in place. But I told my wife, the last thing I want to do when I travel is be out there doing what I can do here. Like when I travel, I want to be with you. Like I want to be able to experience things as a family. Um, because like I said, hey, you know, time is of the essence. We're not getting younger. I want to squeeze as much out of life as I possibly can and just live life to the fullest and just give everything that I do like 150%, whether it's being the mayor, um, dancing on, 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 you know, Facebook to make people smile, making bubble snakes, snakes, teaching people how to make masks or just walking, just eating, not, you know, just everything. I just want to just love it all and love people. Oh, man. You need to run for governor. I know. No. <laughs> you got to run for president next. Well, no, I love my life, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't want any more headaches. Anyway, thanks, that was Derek. Super fun. Next, that was, that was... next time we come to Kauai, we should hit you up and go to your spots. I think, but you're more hectic than me. I kind of chill when I serve. Nah, there's like Kevin. Like, you like you guys would love it. Yeah, when you do so, come to Kauai, hit us up. My wife, my family, and I would love to bring you out and introduce you to good people and help you build connections so that you have your own little Kauai Ohana when you come and visit. That uh, would be fun. Today. Yeah, oh, man. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think. Kevin, you've never surfed on Kauai. Yeah. I think I've only surfed at Pine Trees. No, I surfed on Kauai. Fun, fun story. Um, man, I surfed. Uh, fun. Yeah, I know. I surfed like Princeville and like up north because I didn't know any spots. Uh, the mayor is correct. If you don't really know the spots, it's really hard to find if you're just like some random, you know, from Oahu. But when I interviewed for my Hawaii Magazine internship, I was actually on a surf trip in Kauai um, by oh, myself, cool. sleeping in my rental car. Um, I don't know if that's, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but I should, (laughs) you're the last person I should have told that. It's okay. I mean, you know, like, uh, you didn't get caught. No, don't. (laughs) We're going to end this podcast before I say anything else that's illegal. You're young, you're you're an intern. Like, what are you supposed to do? I was like 18. I, all my money went to the rental car. Exactly. You know, you did what every 15, 16, 17 year old would do. I was young and, and dumb and now I'm still young and Still pretty dumb, dumb. Uh, to be yeah. honest, but a little less dumb. I don't do illegal things anymore. I'm gonna, I, you know, what I do is I end podcasts before I say more illegal things uh, to the mayor. Go, I'm, getting, I'm getting already like, you know, the people behind me are like, you're 15 minutes late. Thanks, Derek. Thank okay, you so well, much. Thank you so much. It was nice talking with you. Nice talking to you too. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. That was cool. Shall we end the podcast now? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I guess so. We didn't do our recording. end of a podcast <laughs> shout outs. We still got two minutes left and I'm still recording. <laughs> so thank you all for listening to the Have a Little Hello Travel podcast. Uh, that was Derek uh, Kawakami. Um, it's good that I looked up his name before we started the podcast because I was calling him David for a while and that would have been really embarrassing for oh, me. Oh, great. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't oh see God. that. Um, man, I can't believe I said that I slept in a car to the mayor of Kauai. That is truly a story that I will be telling later. Um, you, please... Oh, yeah. Man, I'm so thrown off now. Please rate us five stars uh, if you enjoyed uh, that. <laughs> um, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. All of our merch is on Shopify. Um, you can see us, all of our content, on HawaiiMagazine.com. Uh, we will have a new hey. website pretty soon. You have less yeah, than a minute, Cat. So we got a new website coming. No, I'm just going to say we have a new website it'll be very cool um and thank you all so much for listening i guess we're gonna say goodbye again three two one bye bye